Christian, why, why I got you, first question, and then I'll give it back to Caleb. But um, um, what are the ages of your brothers? What's your age? I am 20, turning 21 here in a couple months. Okay. My younger brother, Cole, who just went, yep. uh, is uh, 19, turning 20 in June. Okay. Older brother, I think he just arrived, actually. Okay. Uh, he's going to be 26 this year at around July. Okay. So. Fair enough. Okay, cool. Now we got that on record because we're going to need that for the story. So, okay, Caleb, go for it. You got it. Can you say and spell your first and last name? Hi, it's uh, Christian Mays. It's C H R I S T I A N M A Y S. Okay, so when the Flint water crisis first kind of happened, how old were you? Shoot, it was a long time ago. I was a little guy. I remember that. I was. Shoot. So. I'll say about like 10, <laughs> around there, 10, 11. It, I'm old, I'm struggling to remember anything. So, I mean, you were pretty, like you were still, I mean, you weren't as young as like Cole when it all happened, but I mean, you were still pretty young. How did that kind of affect you growing up, going to school and everything, and that's all happening and your mom's kind of like a leader of activists against it? At first I had no idea what was going on. Like, I didn't understand what, a, I was a very innocent kid. I had no clue anything like this could happen, period, let alone. Um, so we were always shielded, right? We were always very protected. And this was something that came through that shield unwillingly um, due to lies, actually, because they said it was totally fine. So we're like, oh, yeah, totally fine. So at the time, I had only known that the government was lying to us and I didn't know the full extent. I didn't quite understand it then. Yeah, yeah, I was 10, but I barely understood anything at the time. I was a dumb kid. But um, yeah, I just, all I really knew is that we were not supposed to drink the water. Don't touch it, don't boil it, don't do anything like that because even at the time they're telling us to do things that we weren't not supposed to do for our health. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I remember, even as a young kid, I remember how heartbroken my mom was because she'd done anything in this world to protect us, to give us the best shot we could. And all of a sudden, just completely through the shield, underneath it, feeding us is this poison water that we were told was totally safe and totally okay. So it was, even as a little kid, I did understand what was going on a little bit. It was just not a great time. It was hard to grow up that like that. When it first started coming out that like they were lying and you guys kind of were still having to act as if the water was okay when it wasn't, um, how did that feel I mean your guys's health was at risk and the government was just saying it's okay it's awful <laughs> even as a kid again I'll bring up the I don't know much as a kid but being lied to by somebody that is supposed to you know make an organization as in my kid mind and make an organization that is stable and safe and they're allowing the stuff it's like having somebody break into your house consistently and like inject you with needles that are you know, obviously toxic and say oh it's totally fine those aren't going to do anything, and you notice your health going like worse and worse and worse. You're starting to, your vision starting to fade, and you're starting to get just harder to move around. It's just, it's just awkward and weird and awful. Because even as a kid, again, dumb kid, still realizing that his government is intentionally screwing stuff up for him and his future, just for at the time a profit, makes you feel worthless especially since they run everything. There's not much you can do about it as a little kid, right, so. What was it like uh, going to school, like being in school at the time when this was all happening? So we actually went to uh, Loomher Academy, which is right outside of Flint, right near the Grand Blank area. So even that area, we still had kids from Flint, just like me, who were told not to touch the water fountains and eventually they completely shut them off entirely, which was also weird. And um, from the three, four years I was in school there before, I grew up there essentially, um, just seeing everything shift and then some kids would start to get made fun of for having water that they have no control over. Your, the clothes would never get clean if you use washers. People's washers would break all entirely. Other kids ran around having no water in their homes at all. Water heaters would break because of it because it was just that toxic, right? It would just break everything in a house and you know it, everything considered is just rough because you could tell who had big issues and who didn't. Some kids would pick on them, other kids would support others. And we were actually one of the families that were trying to make as much notice for the kids back then to tell their parents, hey, we should get our water checked out because this is not right. Look what's going on with our clothes. Our clothes are never getting clean. They're getting faded. Our skin is starting to bubble and rash and itch. And 
I'm getting less and less healthy by the day and some other kids are having the same issues and had zero clue because again, at the same time, the government had instilled this thought in our head that there was absolutely nothing wrong. All you gotta do is boil your water before you use it and just keep the water hot, right? So it was rough. So um, through all of this, your mom definitely took a lead when it comes to talking about it, educating others about it, taking action towards the government. How did that feel? Like, did that change kind of your view of your mom and how so? I never thought she'd be so outwardly like that because anyone would think that they're, oh, it's just my mom, you know? It's gonna be just me, my family, my mom. And then here comes my mom screaming at the, uh, the government officials and anyone she can to fix what had been broken because of our health. And well, yeah, I just, I'm so grateful because all of this was just because she wanted her kids healthy. Right, she knew, and obviously her health was getting destroyed too. My dad's, everyone in this house, our cats, right, our dogs. Um, she wanted justice, and she fought for it consistently, never stopping, and still has not stopped after what eight, nine years? It's gonna be nine years now. So, it was weird, um, just because again, you don't expect your small family home to get in this kind of scaling kind of deal, just because of the publicity that we she wasn't even intending to get. The publicity she wanted to get was spreading the word and making sure that your stuff is totally fine, unlike ours and the entire city at this point. So, you know, there were some things where it's like, yeah, my mom's a kind of a celebrity, you know what I mean? But for different reasons than just being wealthy or <laughs> acting, I guess. So it was, it's inspiring for sure. At the time when I was a little kid, all I thought was like, oh, my mom's famous. But... I understand why, I understand what's going on exactly, I understand that she's still fighting, and it's, I'm doing everything I can to help. Um, but, you know, as again, as a kid, it's just, wow. Do you remember going to fights with her? Yes. Tell yep. me about that. Oh man, we went to so many marches, so many signs were made, we still have them, they're everywhere. Um, we went to protests and stuff, we went to Hesley um, on my birthday, which is also Michael Moore's birthday, which is really cool. And um, well, anyway, anytime she could bring us along, she would, because we wanted to go. It was so cool, because we always came home um, asking her what was going on. It was like, hey, what, what, what would you go to today? What would you do today, right? Because obviously we're worried about her, but just hearing what she's exactly doing, going against the government, trying to get everything situated for us because they're not doing the work, it was just kind of, again, it's a big inspiration, and it was a lot of fun, even though a lot of the marching we did were cold, and then as a little kid, you're like, oh, I want to do this, but it was all worth it. We grew as people. It made me think of things differently in general, and uh, just a lot of fun. Tell me what you learned from it. Oh, man. If you don't do something about a bad situation, nothing will get fixed, right? So if we had just stayed in our homes and not protested, not did anything, just let it happen, it would have just kept happening. And we've, this whole entire situation might not happened if the city didn't come together and fight what was going on, right? Because, I mean, if they, the, the whole plan was to quiet us down, shut us up, and just continue profiting off of what they've done, let people die, hundreds of people dying, they don't care, right? So um, you have to work for what you need even though you don't feel like you should, water is a human right. It shouldn't you have to you know it shouldn't be something you have to fight for. I mean, I guess nowadays it is because you can capitalize anything, right? So, um, so fight for what you need and what you want, and don't give up. It's been a long time. Like I'm not saying nine years is just some the bro you know breezed pie. I, I grew up in that. So, uh, and we're still fighting. We're gonna keep fighting because the skin people are still trying to do things like we hadn't done anything in the beginning. So it's a whole process. So yeah. Tell me about your mother during this time. What was what were you seeing with her? Um, to start off with the negative, we saw her health go from strong, very healthy, very active to just collapsing it's because she drank so much water because she's working out she's getting beefy and um as a kid we're working out with her but um 
her health took a serious decline. She had been in the doctor over and over and over, and she still is. And um, that's also, like, in that same kind of health degrade, that's when her voice got louder and louder and louder. So um, she, like us, have become way more educated in things we didn't think we needed to be. Um, and she's still helping people. We still do everything we can uh, because there's still people out there that think, oh, Flint's fixed. They fix like a couple hundred service lines, if that, and none of the interior pipes. So we don't, we didn't, I don't think we normally have to understand this unless we're plumbers, but here we are understanding a lot of things that plumbers are taught just because we want clean water and we want healthy homes. So. When was it the hardest? All of it. Just because you had to live with this thing in your mind that it's like, what if nothing gets fixed? And it's been nine years, our pipes have not been replaced. And settlements have been done for certain, right? We've, been, we've made progress, but will it ever go back to normal? No. I will not look at a faucet and think, I can drink out of that. I will never, I can't even go to like other cities and drink out of the faucets. It just feels weird to me. I still struggle with feeling that I'm going to be totally clean after a shower just because of the water. I use a ton of soap and everything like that. Do my best. Um, and now I see things differently. Uh, it's like, hey, this you know, whole entire system here, I have to, I've, I've pretty much standardized water treatment stuff in my house when I'm going to move out. It's just something you never really have to think about, but I get, now we do. But our health is, is taking a hit, all of ours, especially my mom's. Um, I had growth issues quite a bit. My joints wouldn't grow at the same rate. My bones were very fr brittle. Broke this arm in an accident on a bike cr crash that I shouldn't have been broken in my arm. It's entirely splintered. And even things like modern day, like I had done this tattoo. It wasn't quite as careful as I should have. Used flint water like a dummy and immediately just rash, scabbed, ink was coming out. It was awful. Went to bottled water, made sure none of the Flint water touched it at all. Even with our filter, uh, filter house, you can't ever get it all out. And they held up. So it's one of those things where just seeing everything go down, people dying, losing loved ones, it's consistently been hard. As, ever since from the beginning to the present day, I can't even say end because it hasn't ended, um, it's just never been easy. Was it worth it? Uh, worth all the fighting and everything like that? Absolutely. Because <laughs> things have gotten done and people are learning. People are actually being helped. We had water drives and such and most of that was just because we all came together and fought, right? We made it public and made it known that we're not just going to sit here and get fed bad water until we all inevitably die, right? So it's absolutely worth it. All the cold days, all the hard work and just all of the I don't know, it's just all the thoughts, right? All the thoughts of just feeling hopeless, but passing through that has been worth it, so. Okay. Um, anything else, Kim? Got anything else? Anything else you want to add? Anything we missed? Anything you want to tell us? Anything? Keep fighting for what you want. Don't stop. It will not just slide into your hands. It very rarely does unless you have millions of dollars, right? Okay. <laughs> What was that? You're young. You're energetic. You ever thought of leaving? Uh, leaving Flint? Yeah. No. Why? We're here. My mom's here. My dad's here. My family's here. And I like Flint. I know everywhere around here. Like, I know how to get anywhere just by closing my eyes and driving at this point. I know all the little potholes, right? This is my home. I, like, I was born here. I will live here. And I don't want to change that just because of something that the government did, right? It's not fair to me. It's not fair to my family. It's just... We're gonna keep fighting, right? It's not gonna be something that ends because it's what needs to be done. Okay, all right, awesome, great work.